Welcome back, friends. I'm Mellow7, and this is Football Manager 2018, and this is going to be the first episode we're filming with my new-to-me camcorder, so we'll see how this works. It is nice. I actually have a little flip-around screen, so I can see what the camera sees, which is a nice change. So we have gone through our mid-winter, our mid-season break, our winter break. Let's go ahead and take a look, see how things have gone. Ah, I take it back. Let's look at transfers first. We did have a transfer break there. So transfer history. Uh, let's see. Um, not a whole heck of a lot. You can see nobody out and uh, not a lot in. Um, really only one of note. And that was Kim Rasmussen, who we also got from OB. We did, by the way, finally end uh, Jurgen Iverson's loan. He he wasn't getting a lot of play time, and he asked us to end it. So we did because we weren't getting a lot of him. But we brought in Kim Rasmussen here. I didn't. Let's be fair. I did not find this young man. Uh, our GM did and brought him in on a loan. He has a finishing of 17, a pace of 9, but his acceleration isn't bad. He's got good anticipation, good composure, off the ball's good, not a huge amount of flair, but all in all, a pretty good player. Now, we have tried to get him into a couple matches, once as a sub and once as a, as a starter, and didn't really get anything out of him. You can see we've got an average rating of 6.4. How much of that is him and how much of that is just the game that he got brought in in? I don't know. He played well in the time he was in. He only had one incomplete pass. He had all of his shots were on target, although none of them were chances. Um, so that finishing of 17 did put us, you know, on net. So we'll have to, season's almost over, but we'll have to give him some more chances. And other than that, that's it. Just some youngsters that were brought in on freeze. Uh, Dennis Jensen here, 16 years old. 15 finishing, though, so he might be the striker of the future, especially with that 14 acceleration and lots of flair. So off the ball needs to come up. Composure needs to come up a little bit. But he's 16 years old. If we were going to stay, I would say this would be somebody we need to pay attention to. I think he's going to be very good. Anders Larson here, 20 years old, a little bit older, plays defensive center, which is a spot we could use a little bit depth, but you can see he's slow. His positioning is okay. His anticipation is a little bit less than that. He's got no, marking and heading are both not spectacular. Jumping reach isn't spectacular. He's unambitious. I think, I think this is probably a waste of money. I think he's just depth for the B team, to be honest. I don't even think he's a starter on the B team. Uh, and then nobody was out. The most important thing was, whoops, that's not what I want, was, let's see, can we see it here? Transfers, staff. Now, I had a big discussion on YouTube the other night on one of the reasons why I think staying here would we'd have to stay for a few years to take this team much beyond. And one of those reasons is coaching. So you can see here, we lost Asker Vilsted. Uh Not a spectacular assistant coach, but he has 10s up there for his coaching, eight man management, 10 judging player. And we lost Leonard here as well. And I'm not really worried about him. Who was the guy we lost that I liked? General manager. We lost somebody that was much better. Uh, maybe it was just this guy right here. But you can see he does have a 12 technical. He's got 10s for attacking, defense, and, and mental. He's got a 20 for working with youngsters. Um, and he was assistant coach for our under-19s team. And 8 for man management and 10 for, for judging player. I tried to... And he's working for 300 per week. That annoys me. Uh, I tried to sign him. He would not sign for anything less than 900 per week. I offered him every bonus, and he eventually went down to 700 per week, and that was it. That was as far as he'd go. So we lost him. But he's making 300 per week. Okay, interesting. Uh, he's making 250 per week. That, by the way, is also more money than I have. I have 220 per week, I believe, is my max for coaches right now to spend. So uh, we didn't bring in anything spectacular. You can see here's our here's our replacement assistant. Is this in? How did I miss? This guy actually is pretty good. This guy is what I was finding. So <laughs> I missed one there. I didn't see him come in. I looked and looked and looked and couldn't find anybody. I essentially gave up and gave it to the GM and said, you fill the staff roles. I'm frustrated. 
I couldn't get anybody. Um, and he's making $100 per week. So this is about what I could get. A couple eights at the most. And you can see he's got a man management of three. And this is our under-19s head coach. This guy, though, he's he's something. I, I missed him come in altogether. Uh, 13, 15, 11, he's pretty darn good. But he's working for 100 pounds per week. That's not going to last very long, though. I have a feeling as soon as he's got a little bit of reputation, he's gone. He's a keeper, though, if we could come up with enough. But... If, if this guy wants 900 per week, even if he went to somebody else for 300 per week, what are the odds we keep this gentleman for 100 per week? This is probably the one, we probably have him for a year, and that then he's gone. Uh, Lhasa here, um, sports scientist of five. And uh, an under-19s physio. His physio is 10, which isn't bad, actually. I, I'm okay with that. But... Only paying two twenty per week means that we're really limiting ourselves on the coaching, uh, and and that's that's going to be an issue. And if we come take a look at our rosters, let's take a look at our our, our B team here. Uh, I've got the actual current and potential ability up as we talk about this, and you can see our our top current ability is seventy four. Now we do have a couple players with some potential to be over a hundred, so we've got four players here that could potentially get there. He's twenty two. Mm, probably not going to get a lot better. Uh, he might. He might. Uh, getting regular game time at the top level might give him a little bit of a boost. He might He might get into the 80s, maybe even hit 90. Um, 20 years old, Simon Peterson, again, he's fairly determined. We might, we might get close to 100 with him. What was Klaus Peterson's personality? Fairly loyal. So he'll stay, but he might not, not, might not work very hard. I don't know. Um, balanced here for this young man. Again, finishing a 15, he's only 16, but he's got a current ability of 44. So we don't have great training. We don't have good coaches. I just don't know that we're going to coach these guys up to anywhere near their potential. There is potential here, whether we, but I don't think we can achieve that potential. And if we look at our under-19s, we've got these not ours. He's He is ours, but he's on loan. And he's still only halfway there at 19. And again, with our coaching, hopefully a lot of loan work gets him there. And we've got a 98, a couple 95s, but no other hundreds coming up. So essentially, what we're looking at for the near future is, is potentially uh, Morgan, uh, Mogensen here and Mortensen. Uh, and Jurgensen here potentially as well. He's, he's 16 as well. So we've got a couple 16-year-olds there. We've got another 16-year-old here. You know, they're probably two years away from being able to really do much. And I don't think we're allowed to. We have a minimum age that we're allowed to start. But I, I think probably, you know, we're a couple years away. And whether Dennis gets there or not, who knows? Um, I don't know. It actually looks better than I was thinking it was. But again, 55, 58, 49, 44. And depending on our coaching, maybe, maybe not. It, it's hard to tell. Um, but I think we're a little bit off, although looking at this, we're probably closer than I wanted to give us credit for. So anyway, is what it is. Let's take a look and see how we have done since the break. Uh, we played friendly, 3-0. Nobody cares. Uh, we got a couple goals from Miklich and one from Sorensen on a penalty shot. We followed that up with a very boring game against Sundrieski. Uh It was away. We got one goal from Bonn, and that was about it. We did not play very good. Then we had this spectacular game against AGF. We had to survive almost a full minute of the first, of just nonstop pressure. Uh, Dew had to make two good saves for us to continue it on. Um, after that, Bond missed a sitter, but a couple minutes later, he made good and scored on almost an identical shot. Six minutes later, though, Casper Junker got a goal, and then Lars Hugard managed to finish off the first half Bond decided to pass it instead of shooting from the same spot this time. Gave Hugard the, 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 the goal. We went into halftime. Coming back from halftime, one of their players dropped down to the ground in injury instantly. Don't know what happened, but it started with him lying on the ground screaming. They managed to go out, get another goal in the 50th minute. We managed to um, essentially uh, kick in a rebound there. Miklich got a rebound, put that in at the 59th minute, and they came back in the 90th. To equalize. To be fair, they probably deserved this one. Um, we did 
they were constantly coming back, but they played harder the whole game. We paid for that, though, with this game against Aalborg. Looking at the match stats, probably should have been a draw or maybe even a win for us, but we ended up losing 2 nothing. This is the very definition of an unlucky day. So you can see they got they got two goals, one from their brand new striker, uh, Bondesi, and one from Matthias Anderson, his first goal of the season. Um, and then Wanderson, I think is his name, just played us for chumps all day. He was just spectacular, even though he didn't get a goal or uh, he didn't show up there on the goal list. He played very well. So today we've got a match against Randers. Um, we'll see how that goes. They are in 12th place. This one is at home. Hopefully we turn things around here. We'll see how it goes. So let's take a look at the roster as things stand right now. I've got Rasmussen up there. He does have a little bit of a niggling injury. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes. We've got a couple days. He's supposed to start rehabilitation tomorrow. So we've got a couple days to click through. Um, otherwise, I have put Bisgard in. I, I don't know. I, I still... His only green number is marking. But his positioning is good but his acceleration and pace are bad. I, I just don't know. He's got good teamwork and he works hard. He's strong. I mean, really, it's the technicals and the, the speed that let him down. But I just, I don't know. It just doesn't work very often with him. He's just an average player. Despite 94, he's probably the worst of these people in the 90s as far as every day. The fact that that I run Kolasic, who's who's 90. Granted, that's pretty close most of the time. 30 years old. But look, he's got good physicals all the way across the board. He also has decent positioning. His anticipation isn't great, but he's got 13, 13, and 13 for heading, marking, and tackling. He, you know, and he also works well and has good teamwork. So I just talked myself into putting him back in. So I say that's what we go with. I'm going to hit continue a couple times here. We'll hopefully go quickly, and we'll play a match against Randers. All right, guys. I thought we'd take a quick look at dynamics before we got in the game, just to keep you apprised, appraised. I guess it's appraised of how things are going. Uh, still match cohesion is excellent. Locker room atmosphere is down a little bit. You know, things haven't been going quite as good for us as we'd like. Uh, we do have one unhappy player at the club. Uh, Christian Rasmussen wants to go out on loan. I've tried. I've got another player who wants to go out and loan, but he's not actually under contract to me, and so I can't loan him out. Uh, and he keeps complaining about it. I'm like, well, I'm not signing you. You can go away. You're, you're not under contract to me. Uh, but he just won't leave. But at least he doesn't show up down here. So we do have Christian here who wants to go out on loan. And our leadership support's excellent. We do still have just essentially the one giant uh, social group and then our one Estonian uh, loanee here by himself. Uh, hierarchy. Um, I've got almost everybody. I wonder if there's an achievement for having the entire team support you. There better be. Uh, I've got two players left. Pierre, for whoever reason, has never really liked me. I don't know why, still. He's never supported me. And Rasmussen, who wants to leave. So, fair enough. Let's go ahead and get into the match. Unfortunately, our other Rasmussen, our striker, is just not quite ready to go out there. 75% and only 64% match fitness. So we're going to put him on the bench. You know, if we need to come in for a couple minutes at the end, we could do that. We do have Daniel Christensen there as a um, as a striker on the bench as well. Oh, my gosh. Way too loud. Let me lower that down a little bit. Dressing room. Um, okay, well, they're going to go a little... Oh, we, were, we did get in trouble for not playing offensive enough on the last match. Uh, the fans and the reporters weren't happy, although we played it the most offensive of any tactically of any match we've played this season uh, in pep talk. So that was a little annoying. It's like, really, guys? I, I played all out attacking almost the entire match trying to squeeze a goal in. And uh, and they're like, oh, why did you suck? We don't like it when you suck. It's like they pretended like we lost because we were playing defensively. We, we weren't. We lost probably because we were playing offensively. That might have been the problem. All right. So this one is one we should definitely win. We're at home. Rasmus, uh, Rasmussen, I've got the name stuck in, stuck in my head now. Randers is uh, one of the worst teams in the league this season. I think we pretty well crushed them last time. Although when our throw-ins go directly to a guy dressed in bright orange, it, it makes me wonder a little bit. And nobody thought that he might run, which is also a little bit annoying. Dew makes a good save, though. I don't know. We might, 
I'm gonna say we've we've played above our ability, I think, probably most of the season. We'll just put that back up for corner. We probably can't complain too much if we have a little bit of rebound here at the end. It's funny how much this game is about momentum. It's about inertia. And and football. Is that just a corner the other direction? Or a penalty? There we go. Uh, it's funny. 2017 was also very much about that. Stop Brock. There we go. Good job, Beck. Get in there. Clear that out. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, anyway, 2018 is even worse. Football Manager 2018 with dynamics. When things go bad, they go bad in a hurry. But when things go good and you can get that, that, that team cohesion up and stuff, then all of a sudden their positioning and their anticipation start to improve. And, and so you are able to play above your numbers because your numbers are effectively higher than what you're actually seeing on the screen due to that dynamics, the effects of the dynamics. So you can, if you can keep the team happy and together, you can play above your numbers, which, you know, makes sense. And, and that's the way sports is in real life. Hugard has this one. He comes charging in. He, can he get across to Bond? This is what we did when we put in uh, Rasmussen. Just we never passed the ball to him in a good position. We passed over him all the time. Bond would pass it to Hugard. Hugard would pass it to Bond. Neither of which has the finishing that Rasmussen has. And so we just weren't making shots. And we're seeing a little bit of that there. Rather than get it into the target man and let him do his bit there, uh, we're just throwing it across and back and forth from winger to winger. Uh, we're not even really getting it into bus well at the moment. So kind of a mutual love fest between Hugard and, and Bond, unfortunately. And we'd really like to see Miklich and Buss involved and Rasmussen when he's in. I mean, right now we've had a clear-cut chance, but we've given up a clear-cut chance. Uh, we've been a little bit better on shots. Only four have been on target, but we've only given up one on target. So, and only two have been long, so not bad shots. Or we haven't been shooting in bad places. They might have been a bad shot. But we've but we've been we've been getting ourselves to where we need to get to to take the shots. Uh, it'd be nice if we could we could finish on him. All right, Miklich holds it up, feeds it back to Bus. Kind of a dangerous pass in there to, to Beck, who ends up losing it. But Sorensen comes back and gets steals it away. Lindstrom up to Bus. He feeds it into Hugard. He's got guys coming in. Can he get it to Miklich? There we go. We headed it. Sent it into somebody who actually has heading. That's nice. One nothing just before the halftime. Hopefully we can keep that up. Guys are looking motivated. I say we need a win here to kind of get back on chance or, you know, back on target here. Hopefully that's the way it'll work. Fingers crossed. I don't know. We'll find out. Just checking to see how long this one's been going. Not as important, hopefully, with the new camera. Uh... Okay, we were nine nine and four. We went four four and two, and then nine nine. And, excuse me, nine nine and uh, and four. So slightly better. Five five and two for you know kind of the second half there, so to speak. And we're doing okay. Thirty nine points. Um. Well, that didn't really work, did it? Nobody's playing badly. Let's say we just throw them all out there again and see what's going on. Still got guys that are working on match fitness out. Oh, that was terrible after the window. Come on, you can't. You can't just sit there and watch the defense. The, the their player come charging in on it. Kalisic. Oh my gosh, you put something on that. That hit the post hard. Crossbar. Excuse me. Bounced way up in the air. Uh, yeah, we can't let their guys just charge in on that and hope that. You know, Dew comes out to get it. It would have been nice if our guys went back and actually played that. Uh, let's go ahead and give them a throw out a little cheeky calm concentrate there. Make sure guys pay attention to what they're doing. Uh, Bond might need a little bit of a breather here. He's down. Sorensen's a little bit tired. We'll see who kind of gets in into the 60s first. Sorensen and Bond. Let's go ahead and make a say change here. Let's be nice if I had Iverson still, but we'll go ahead and put Larson in there. Let him play out there. We know he'll take a shot. Let's see, can we can we get it to him? Sorensen into Volgamuth. He should be on the right side there. That was Bus charging in. Oh, 
Would have been better if Buss maybe would have passed that one back across the goal for somebody, but we know Buss is going to take the shot. We're okay with that. That's worked well enough for us. Let's go to make another sub here. Um, Hendrickson's a bit tired. We'll go ahead and put Bisgard in. Trying to be better with that. I think I've done a better job overall in the season. Not so much on games I, I, I commentate on because I'm too busy commentating. Uh, but I think I've done a better job for the most part of the season of getting guys in on subs. Getting a little bit of play time, even if it's just the last few minutes of a game. Doing what we can. We may as well put Christensen in, see if he can get a little bit... Uh, let's put... Let's put... Uh, let's put Pierre in. Change my mind. Get him a couple minutes. I don't know that we've got him in long enough to actually get a rating on any of the games we put him in at, but... Got to get him some play time. Probably should get him a start here and there, but he's not as happy. Well, I don't know. I don't think that's true. I think he probably is. As ha I think of him as an attacking midfield center, not as a midfield center. Um, and and Lidstrom, I think of as kind of a little bit of both. Mortis is offside. Okay. I didn't see it. I thought Bisgard was way back there, but clearly I was wrong. And I wasn't paying that much attention, to be honest. So we, we walk out of this one with a win. Uh, one nothing. Okay. I mean, I can see that. 16 shots to 12. Uh, we had two clear cut to one. Okay. Fair enough. Probably a fair result. And we needed it. But again, we did this at home against one of the worst teams in the league this season. That's kind of how we've, we've fallen at the moment. But but we did squeak out with a win. So So we'll take it. Uh, set for goal bonus. Okay. But he's only got nine league goals for us this season, which is pretty sad. Uh, Mueller's bonus paid out. Oh, our general manager. I had to, I had to throw in a few of these to try to get people in. So, okay. So we have reached the championship group then. Uh, there we go. We qualified. Woohoo. I didn't even know. And that might be part of it. It might be the pressure of getting close to that game, which has been holding the team back as well. We saw that a little bit last season as well. So it may be that it's just, we just needed one more win. And so the team was just not quite able to, that pressure was enough to slow us down. I don't know. Maybe we'll play well for the rest of this little bit. Uh, we'll have to find out. We don't have much left before the end of the season. I'll probably go ahead and play through these four or at least these three. Maybe we come, I think we come back for this one right here. We come back for the Broomby and uh, in the cup match, and we'll see how we do in the quarterfinal. So until then, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you hate it. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thank you very much to all the people who've been subscribing. Uh, I, th I think I've said this a few times in the rim world, but if you're here for Football Manager, uh, you may not have seen those. So uh, our numbers are up. We're, I think we were 33 subscriptions in the last 28 days. So this is, I think, the first time that I've ever kind of sustained a full month of uh, more than one subscription per day. Uh, on average. So thank you very much. I do appreciate it, guys. And uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers.